Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We thank God for another day, another Sunday. His brand new mercy has allowed us to see. We're going to first um, start with the word of prayer before we begin with our praise and worship. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, oh God. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see this wonderful, beautiful Sunday, oh Lord. Lord, we ask you to come into this place, oh Lord, and let your presence reign in Jesus' name. for being so awesome, so wonderful, and so worthy to be praised.
We ask, Lord, that, Father, you will come now, dear Lord, to take the high seat in this service. Lord, Father, God, let your presence be known in the name of Jesus. Uh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Have your way uh, in the name of Jesus. And the church of God will say amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time as we'll now affirm our faith. Let us now say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Let us be seated. Amen. Do you all see why we continue to have the Apostles Creed? Yeah. <laughs> Some of us have just about forgotten. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we're trying to speak and memorize it at the same time. Amen. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. We miss a couple of words, don't we? But we are Methodists, and we thank God that we are able, amen, to state what we believe. 
And this time, we're going to have our scripture lesson. Sister Betty Shaw is coming now. Amen. To share with us. Can we receive her by saying amen? Amen. amen. God bless you. She's coming. Today is Women's Day, y'all. Global Mission Sunday. Amen. And we thank God for these ladies that are here today.
you are a God who turns dawn to darkness. Yes. And we love you, Lord. Yes. We lift your name on high. Yes. We praise you right here, Father God, in your sanctuary. Yes. We praise you, Father God, in the firmament of your power. Yes. We praise you, Father God, for your mighty acts. We love you, Lord. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for every blessing you have given us. For waking us on a new Sunday morning. Yes. And getting us started on our way. Yes. Oh Lord, for food, clothing, and shelter. Yes. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For the flowers and the trees, the ocean and the breeze. Oh Father God, we thank you. Thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you for our families, for thank our friends, you. and our loved ones. Thank you. We thank you for this church, Lord. Yes. Where we have been able to come and pray and worship. And call your name and sing hymns of praises and love to you, Lord God. Especially since our church was destroyed in 2018, Lord. And we have good memorial, Lord, for God we thank you for allowing us to worship in their chapel, Father. We thank you for family, friends, and loved ones. And you, we pray for all their health and strength, Lord. We pray that you will help them because you know what each and every one of us not just family, friends, and loved ones, but people all over the world, Lord. Yes. The immigrants, oh Lord, the displaced, the misjudged, the misunderstood. You know all about it, Lord. You know all about it, you know all about it Lord. So we just pray, pray for them and lift, yes. them and lift their name up to you, Lord. Yes. Because you are the one who can shower the blessings, Lord. Yes. Oh, Father God, so much is going on in the world, and you know it. Yes. Because you know everything. Yes. And Lord, you know us from the top of our head to the tips of our toes. Yes. Oh, Father God, we just ask you to smile down on us. Help our nation. Yes. Not just our nation, but the world, Lord. Yes. Help the leaders make the right decisions. Yes. Yes. And Father God, we just pray for this woman's day. Yes. We thank you for this beautiful music and the musicians, yes. Lord. Yes. Come every Sunday yes. just to lift your name in oh, song, yes. Lord, the way that David said. Yes. Lift your name in song yes. into his gates with thanksgiving, yes. into his, his church with praise and song. Yes. Oh, Lord yes. God, we love you. Yes. And Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for our pastor and his family, yes. his first lady, yes. and his family. Yes. Oh, Lord God, we pray for our speaker, yes. Sister Donna, Lord. Oh, Lord, we are just so thankful for her anointing, yes, Lord, yes, and that she wants to come and deliver a word today. Yes, Father God, we just, oh, if we had if we had a thousand tongues, Lord, I could not thank you enough for all you've done, all you will do, and just for being there to walk with us and talk with us, because you are our shepherd that we shall not want. You are our light and our salvation. Oh, Lord, you are a refuge in a storm. Oh, Father God, we just love you. And now, Father God, we just ask that you will continue to bless us. Smile down on us. And I know I can't say everything I would like to say, or even the thoughts, some thoughts that won't even come to my mind now, that will come later on. But, Lord God, you know what they are. And I know, I know that when I call on your precious name, you will hear. Thank, Thank you, Father God, for every blessing. Thank and now, Lord God, I ask you to please continue to be a lamp unto our feet yes. and a light unto our path. Yes. In the most holy and precious name yes. of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
let's give God a praise. and 
girl. And adult. Our um, theme for today is the woman at the well. Uh, Jesus satisfies our thirst. Our scripture is coming from John 4, verses 13 and 14 from the New NIV version. And it reads, Jesus, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whomever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Amen. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you know I always have a little story for you. <laughs> so, so let me give you my little story and then I'm gonna give you my Bible story. Most of you play some kind of sport, or have played some kind of sport, for the bigger kids. Everyone plays some kind of game really hard. Whenever you play a sport or a game really hard, that is when you exercise, and it is very important for you to take in plenty of liquid. The question, what kind of liquid? My beverage of choice is, is this, is this little bottle right here, regular water. But when you go to the grocery store, you find all kinds of water. I didn't realize they had so many different kinds of sports drink and sparkling water and flavored water and any kind that your little heart desires. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to know what's the best kind. Mm -hmm. The advertisements for uh, one popular brand of water says, it's better than water, juice, or any other kind of drink. Mm -hmm. If you give your body this water, it will not thirst. It gets you uh, and keeps you, it gets you going and keeps you going. Wow, that's a whole lot. <laughs> they have convinced you of one thing, and I have not noticed uh, this particular thing. In any of the claims for sports drinks or water, they don't claim that you will never thirst again. Mm. Mm. If, your body, if you had something that your body could take in and you would never thirst again, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But Jesus claims that very thing. So let's go to the Bible story. One day Jesus was walking through a town in Samaria. He was hot and tired and sit down to rest by a well. Mm -hmm. A woman came to the well to get some water. Jesus asked her if she would give him a drink. The woman was real surprised because Jesus spoke to her mm -hmm. and Jews would not usually speak to Samaritans. Mm -hmm. Jesus told her that he could give her living water. She was a little puzzled and surprised that he was talking to her mm -hmm. and wondered what was he talking about. Mm -hmm. She didn't understand what Jesus was talking about, so she said, you don't even have anything to get water in. How can you give me living water? Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said, whoever drinks from the water from this well will thirst again. Mm -hmm. But whomever drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. Wow. Water that will satisfy your thirst so you will never thirst again. Jesus wasn't talking about our thirst for water from a well. He was talking about our thirst for God. The Bible teaches us that we have a thirst in our hearts for a living God. And that is the thirst that Jesus 
was talking about would satisfy you. So when we give Jesus our hearts, he satisfies our thirst for God, and we will never thirst again. Amen. Jesus is life. Amen. Drink it up. Amen. Let us say this, this little short prayer. Dear Lord, you have given us Jesus, the living water. We may drink your living water, so we will never thirst again. Amen. 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 Goodbye, boys and girls. Have a great week. Today is Women's Day. So, whenever you talk to a woman, tell her that you love her and that she is a wonderful creature made by God. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
this time, amen, this wonderful praise team will come back again to give us our pretty message and song. Can you sing? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I believe one of the singers out here said, you can't touch this. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. To God be the glory. You can't touch that. All right. Amen. Here they come. Tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow. Gloria. Amen. Tarita and Tyra. Let us hear them right here. know for sure that God has brought you through some things. And you're grateful. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah.
here before you first giving honor to God and our pastor and First Lady Lindo, but also to you in the audience and those who have tuned in over Facebook Live. I also want to thank the Women's Day Committee uh, for counting me worthy to speak on such a wonderful occasion. Amen. And lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my mom, Ernestine Green, who's you know in her absence, but she celebrated the birthday yesterday, and so she's kind of tough to ask. My daughter, Ariel Brown, and my sister, Reverend Renee Carter, who have come to support me this morning. Amen. Um, I did tell my mom that this was her birthday present, so happy <laughs> birthday again, Mom. <laughs> If you would, please join me in a brief word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word, and I ask that as I go forth, you will increase as I decrease, yes. so that this message can be received, bring forth a righteous harvest in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, as previously noted, our theme this year is Zion, Are You Able and Willing to Give? And comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, and it reads as follows from the Amplified Bible. For if the eagerness to give is there, it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one has not. Mm -hmm. Now, to understand the circumstances surrounding this verse, you must first understand that in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Paul instructed the church in Corinth to take up a collection for the impoverished Jews, Christian Jews, in Jerusalem, and they agreed to do so. Yet, a year passed. And we discover in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 that they still had not paid the money that they had promised. Mm -hmm. Disappointed, Paul tries to demonstrate the importance of giving with a willing spirit by pointing out how the church in Macedonia, in spite of their afflictions and immense poverty, begged Paul to receive their monetary gift. Mm -hmm. Their willingness to give when they had so little as a result of their conversion to Christianity. Uh, was in Paul's opinion, it made their contribution all the more precious because it was propelled by their faith. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the Corinthians' failure to follow through upset Paul so much that he tells them in verse 11, now therefore perform the doing of it, mm -hmm. that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which he has. Mm -hmm. What Paul is telling them is that a year ago you were willing to give so finalize the transaction because you have the means to do so. Amen. Perhaps he should have reminded them of Ecclesiastes 5, verses 4 through 5, which expressly warns, when thou vowest a vow unto God, mm -hmm. defer not to pay it. Amen. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou mm -hmm. hast vowed. Mm -hmm. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldst vow and not pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Though I realize that when Solomon wrote this, he wasn't particularly speaking about a vow to pay money, uh -huh. but any promise made to God. Yes, come on now. In the context of 2 Corinthians 8, the censure is damning. So this morning, I want to beg your indulgence to go beyond the monetary aspect of our Woman's Day theme to explore the mindset governing the behavior of the Corinthians and us as well. Amen. Give me just a moment here. As well, being Christians, to whom the Lord has given explicit instructions on how we are to serve him. Just like the Corinthians failed to keep their promise to Paul, we also fail to get it right with God sometimes, which begs the question, why? Therefore, the topic I've chosen to speak on today is, who stopped you from running well? Amen. Who stopped you from Amen. running well? Because as I read both letters to the Corinthians in preparation for what I would say, what was immediately evident was Paul's frustration with the church at Corinth. Imagine laboring to teach people who refuse to apply what they've learned. Not only had Paul brought the message of Christ to Corinth, he did so by exemplifying a variety of spiritual gifts that should have been confirmation to them that God was present. And yet, they dared question his apostleship. In his letters, then, Paul is contending with the serious errors in doctrine and practice that arose among the believers and which threatened the survival of the Christian community in Corinth. Mm -hmm. He is also reprimanding the gross immorality among the Christians that even the pagan worshipers in that city would have condemned. Mm -hmm. And he is challenging them to judge their own disputes rather than dragging each other before pagan courts mm -hmm. to do what they should be able to do themselves. In short, he's putting them in check for turning back to their bad habits so soon. 
Now, for my Bible scholars, you'll recognize that the biblical text from which I derived my topic comes from Galatians 5, in which Paul is admonishing the Galatians also for so quickly forgetting that Jesus Christ died for their sins and for allowing others to creep into the church and cause confusion Come by on. perverting the gospel of Come Jesus on. Christ. Come on. Come on. Paul says in verse 7, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? In other words, you were talking according to the gospel just fine. You were walking it. What made you stumble so that you stopped believing? I would venture that it boiled down to the kind of religion the early churches had. It wasn't a durable religion. It wasn't a mature religion. It wasn't even a good religion. How many remember this old call and response gospel song that says, do you have good religion? Amen. <laughs> the response That's right. is supposed to be, certainly, Lord, uh -huh. yeah. but you know we lie. <laughs> <laughs> because we can have a form of religion, uh -huh. but not good religion. That's right. And I'm persuaded that the Corinthians at that time only possessed a form of religion. Amen. Come on. How do I know that? right back and tell you. <laughs> well, Paul himself bore witness to the fact that they could be gullible, through e gullible enough to have their minds corrupted if another gospel was preached, proving that they weren't established in the faith. Mm -hmm. But I fear, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Mm -hmm. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, yes. whom we have not preached, yes. Come on, or if you receive another spirit, mm -hmm. which ye have not received, mm -hmm. or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, mm -hmm. ye might well bear with him. Mm -hmm. So I submit for your consideration mm -hmm. that if early Christians, mm -hmm. who were not many years removed from when Jesus walked the earth, yeah. performing miracles, could be so easily persuaded to have their faith tested, how much more are we of the Christian church today? Yes. Amen. The early church knew who Jesus was, mm -hmm. were ministered by his apostles and disciples, whereas we walk by faith, not having that firsthand recommendation. Amen. Mm -hmm. And though the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight, mm -hmm. if you're not strong enough in your faith, mm -hmm. what then? Mm -hmm. Well, the difference is the relationship you have with God. If I know that if he kept me yesterday, yeah. he will keep me today. Right. If I know that if he answered my prayer today, then surely he will answer my prayer tomorrow. Yeah. If I know yeah. that if I lost my way yesterday and today and will probably lose my way again tomorrow, yeah. yet I believe that if I confess my sins, he is faithful to forgive me. Yeah. And I know he got it. So although I might trip while I'm running, I can recover my balance. That's right. I might even fall, That's right. but I can also get up. That's yeah. right. It's when I don't mm -hmm. that I need to ask myself the question, who or what stopped me from running well? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus spoke extensively about those who appeared to be holy, mm -hmm. but who were only concerned about the prestige of their position. Mm -hmm. They were the scribes, professional interpreters of the law, mm -hmm. and the Pharisees a political religious sect among Jews. <coughs> and he called them hypocrites uh -huh. and warned his disciples not to be like them. Mm -hmm. In the 23rd chapter of Matthew, Jesus tells them in verse 3, All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus is warning them because although they know the law of God, they don't live the law of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nor do they practice the gospel yes. that they preach. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, have you ever met people who are quick to greet you with a holy greeting like, have a God-blessed day. Amen. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Or I'm too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm. And yet, the moment you make them angry, Amen. they're just as quick ready to hurt you or curse you out. Amen. I used to work with people like that. Amen. But what I realized uh -huh. is that they only possess an outward form of God. Mm -hmm. They want people to believe mm -hmm. that they're holy because they know a few pat phrases. Mm -hmm. But they haven't grasped the whole concept of salvation. That's right. Or 
who among us have had our hearts pricked or our spirit convicted when we've heard a stirring sermon, but instead of repenting, choose to criticize the preacher? If you haven't, then I ask you to consider Stephen, the first Christian martyr documented in the Bible. He was accused by members of the Jewish synagogue of blaspheming Moses and God with his preaching. Yet when he dared to defend himself in such a manner that criticized the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high council, by saying, among other things, that they had killed Christ just as their ancestors had killed the prophets, mm -hmm. the council and those witnessing the proceedings became so enraged that Acts 7, 54 and 58 says, that when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears Amen. and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. They stopped their ears. Church, they stopped their ears. Now, I know sometimes the truth hurts, uh -huh. but to reject what the Spirit has to say to the church, yes, yes, yes. to accept the premise that what I don't know, mm -hmm. I can't be held responsible for it, is an affront to everything Jesus taught us about sin and redemption. Uh -huh. So what is good religion? How do you know if you have it? Uh -huh. And if you don't have it, how do you get it? Amen. Come on, come on. Well, good religion, one, seeks the Lord daily and creates a relationship. It's mm -hmm. like when you exercise every day and watch what you eat, you'll start seeing results. Well, sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Isaiah 5 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Yes. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, mm -hmm. and he will have mercy upon him. Mm -hmm. And to our God, he will abundantly pardon. Mm -hmm. Second, good religion rejoices in hope, is patient in tribulation, mm -hmm. and is ever prayerful, Romans 12 and 12. Amen. Now, see, when we have good religion, it should seep deep into our soul mm -hmm. and form an immunity against the toxic things mm -hmm. in this world what, that would stop us from running well. That's right. When you build up a natural immunity, for example, you might still fall ill, but uh -huh. you won't die from the illness that you contract. Yeah. Therefore, when you find your faith attacked, uh -huh. good religion keeps you hopeful for things that cannot be seen. Right. It recognizes that things come to pass, uh -huh. not to stay, right. so that with patience we can continue on. That's right. And it understands that prayer changes things. Come on. Yeah. Three, good religion is spiritually minded, not carnally minded. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. <coughs> Excuse me. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Romans mm -hmm. 8 5. Mm -hmm. And four, Finally, good religion is steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and that says it all. Amen. Amen. So look, I'm not going to lie. You have to work in good religion. That's right. Uh -huh. You have to understand the ramifications, especially in times that we're living in, uh -huh. of not lying in the bosom of the Most High God. Uh -huh. you got to walk it, not That's just right. talk it, That's because right. talk is cheap. Uh -huh. all right. People who possess a form of godliness, on the other hand, scare me the most because if you lack discernment, you can be easily fooled. People who with only a form of religion, one, lack a true heart. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind mm -hmm. and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment according to Mark 12 and 30. Mm -hmm. But let me point out that those who lack a true heart turn towards God, lack a true faith. That's right. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, it comes out by the things they say and by what they do or don't do. That's right. Two, people with only a form of religion will front like Superfly walking down Fifth Avenue. Oh, <laughs> One of my favorite examples of this is found in the 19th chapter of Acts, and it reads as follows. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took it upon themselves to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, mm -hmm. and Paul I know, mm -hmm. but who are ye? Amen. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them uh -huh. and prevailed against them, yes. 
so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Mm -hmm. And to that I say, don't let your mouth write a check that you're not able to cash. That's right. <laughs> because they had neither the gift nor the spiritual authority to even attempt such a thing. Mm -hmm. Three, people with only a form of religion will deceive many and lead them astray mm -hmm. by giving them their interpretation of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. right. And Peter warned us in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, that there were false prophets also among the people. Mm -hmm. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, That's right. who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord mm -hmm. that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift mm -hmm. destruction. <clears throat> Therefore, it behooves us all to know who preaches Jesus mm -hmm. and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can judge for ourselves is by knowing the word of God mm -hmm. for ourselves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Church, we are commanded to live a life of love and faith and obedience mm -hmm. to the will of God. Mm -hmm. And when we fail to do so, we will be chastised. Mm -hmm. Because whom the Father loves, he chastises. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in writing his letters to the Corinthians, Paul was seeking to correct behavior that would put them back on the highway of holiness, if you will. And I want you to understand also that Paul knew full well that he was dealing with babes in Christ uh -huh. and not mature Christians. Uh -huh. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 2, he tells them, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Uh -huh. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, uh -huh. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Mm -hmm. Yet and still, there was an expectation for them to be holy and to strive to live according to the doctrine of Jesus Christ that he and other disciples had taught them. Mm -hmm. His chastisement of them for not paying what they promised was not so much that he wanted their money, but he wanted their obedience. Mm -hmm. Because in obedience, there are blessings more abundant than what they withheld for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, if I could take just a little more of your time, I'd tell you about Ananias and his wife Sapphira, mm -hmm. who got so caught up when others were giving to the needy that they decided to sell a piece of property like others that had been doing. Mm -hmm. But instead of giving all the proceeds to the apostles, they lied about how much they had sold it for and kept some of the money for themselves. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Mm -hmm. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? Mm -hmm. And after it was sold, was it the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? Mm -hmm. You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. Mm -hmm. And so when he heard the condemnation, Ananias immediately fell down dead. And then when Sapphira showed up three hours later, and Peter asked her if that was the price they got for the land, and she said, yes, that was the price. Mm -hmm. Peter said to her, how would you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. Mm -hmm. And immediately Sapphira fell down at his feet and died also. Mm -hmm. Obedience church is always better than sacrifice. Amen. Now, our Woman's Day theme asks a simple question. Zion, are you willing and able to give? And our response, if we have good religion and have not been hindered by leaning on our own understanding or someone else's opinion, should be yes, according to what we possess, not what we don't have. And this extends well beyond the monetary to who and what we are as a person. For if I have no money, but a talent with which to share, then accept my talent that is able to reap a good reward. Amen. Or if, or accept my skill, which might produce what your money can afford to buy. Yeah. Or accept my love, which might be able to draw others to Christ, because those who know me, but don't know God, yes. will come to know God because they see the love of God in me. Amen. In conclusion, Evans, I want you to ask yourself, who stopped you? from running well. Uh -huh. If because of circumstances or disappointments, you laid your good religion down and put on a form of godliness instead, mm. then I ask that you remove those shackles right now Amen. and go back to where you laid your good religion down. Amen. Throw away that bottle of milk and ask the Lord to give you something that will sustain you through the rough times. Mm -hmm. Amen. My grandma, 
always wanted food that would stick to her ribs. That's right. She didn't want a whole meat thing. She wanted a meat, That's right. a starch, uh -huh. two veggies, a biscuit, and a dessert so she didn't get hungry again before breakfast. Amen. Have that good religion at it. Amen. And with a willing spirit, give of yourself so that you can reap a bountiful harvest. Amen. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. Amen. But if you lack the will to give, or even that good religion that the saints of old sing about, mm -hmm. and you find yourself no longer running well, remember, prayer changes things. That's right. Mm -hmm. And as I turn the service back over into the hands of Reverend Lindo and take my seat, the one thing I know for sure is that he's willing and able to pray the prayer of intercession. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Sunday school this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, if you missed Sunday school this morning, you did miss a treat. But that's all right. God had a way of making up for it because you were here this afternoon to hear what thus says the Lord. School teacher, church teacher, and should be a preacher. Amen. Amen. I am so tempted to ask the congregation for a uh, for a motion on her trials. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that is not our call. That's God's call. Amen. I looked over there and I thought I saw Jonah. But after a while I realized it was just Donna Green. I got a wonderful lady. Come on, let's get going. Donna, in true form, I don't believe you have failed the Lord. Amen. You have done all that He has called you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who has stopped you? Hallelujah. From answering the call. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. Sabrina and Amen. Hallelujah. Betty have done it. But God is waiting on number three. <laughs> but truly, she spoke a word today. Yeah. I believe you yeah. should have pricked all heart to a point. Yeah. That if it is that you are under the sound of a voice, wherever you are, here, on Facebook, YouTube, wherever it is that you have viewed this message today, I trust that the Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, will have not only convict you, but to convince you that the right way is God's way. For when there is a form of religion with a denial of the Holy Spirit that has the power to change our mind, hallelujah. We have issues. Amen. For Donna spoke the truth today. The Bible says you shall know the truth. And it's the truth that will set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If there's one today that would like to come and to just meet at the altar and speak to the Lord concerning position in life, your religion as Sister Green has spoke about today, this is your opportunity Amen. to take a bold step in the word, to take a bold step to come and just say, Lord, here I am, touch me and make me the person you want me to be. Would it be wonderful? 
Or perhaps it is that, amen, you would love to come and to give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Or to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your opportunity, my beloved. I would ask you to stand, but I believe you can do it from the seat that you are. Or where you are. If there be one, will you come to me? If you desire prayer today, just, just raise your hand if you desire prayer. If you desire prayer. I see you. I see you. I see you where you are. God bless you. With uplifted hands. Father, we are so thankful for what our ears are hearing today, what our eyes are seeing. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this worship experience today. And Lord, God Almighty, we ask that even right now, there are many of us that have raised our hands that are in need of prayer. That Lord, whatever the need may be, God Almighty, whether it is infirmity within the body. Whether, Lord God Almighty, whether it be, oh God, an unregulated mind, oh God, maybe it is confusion in the home. Lord, it could be a legal issue. It could be a spiritual issue. It could be a family issue. We know that you know all about ask, oh God, that you would touch it right now. In the name of Jesus. For the heart, oh God, that have been contrite. Touch the heart today. But Lord, for the heart that have decided to go a different way. Lord, we ask your blessings on that person. Set it anoint in that way. And Lord, let the question be answered. Yes. Of the topic that we heard today. Who has stopped us from running well? Yes. Let the oh Father God our answer to be us. It is me, O oh Lord that stand in need yes. of your blessings yes. and your touch in Jesus' name. The church of God say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory be to God. My dear beloved, we have had a wonderful time today. Hallelujah. We're going to ask, amen, now, Sister Summers, our missionary president, if she will come and to give remarks. Amen. Good afternoon.
got a wonderful job. She said she was going to be short. Yes. And she did just that. Come on, y'all just, I was praying that I had to God to be the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said to her, I said, I know you want to thank a whole bunch of folks. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. And I almost took a uh, vice grip to get her here. But amen. But the Lord got her here for us. And we thank God. Amen. Amen. And uh, to all the uh, women of Evans Metropolitan on this your special day, Women's Day, amen. And may all your days be as special as today. God bless you, amen. And we thank God for all the participants today. Let's give them a hand, amen. amen. God bless you, amen. Amen. We know, I tell you, God bless you, amen. Came right on in, amen. God be the glory, amen. And to you, Donna, Lord have mercy. You had me riveted to my seat. I wanted to jump up a couple of times. I said, Lord, but it don't take the preacher crazy. Amen. But I was enjoying every moment of that word. Amen. Let us now give her one final hand for the word of God. Of course, I've always got to look to my faithful few. Amen. Uh, this uh, the, 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 this uh, team, this praise team, I don't even want to call them the praise team. I'm going to call her the Evan Metropolitan, amen, wonderful team, amen. I don't know what to call y'all, but y'all would just be good, amen. Yeah, yeah. Come on, let's give the, uh, <laughs> with that, amen, we're at the, uh, amen, at the, uh, the epitome of our service today, uh, Reverend Carter, Amen. To God be the glory. Good to see you. Amen. You know, she's on the next door. Amen. <laughs> Our good friend. Let's give God a praise. Amen. Ari, I haven't seen Ari in a long time. Y'all know her, don't you? Amen. This is Donnie Ford. Stand up so we can see you. Amen. There she is. That's amen. There she is. Amen. God bless you to each and every one. Amen. To God be the glory. With that now, we are getting ready to depart. Amen. We're going to ask that the acolytes will come to extinguish the candles, and then we'll have our benediction. And ladies, don't forget, amen, the, uh, the parent body of Acts, that, amen, that you will render, amen, your offering, amen, of $100, amen, no matter where you are, who you are. And of course, now, men, you have Acts also to equal Amen. The giving of the women. So we're asking every member of the church that will give a hundred dollars, amen, to the Women's Day, uh, amen, uh, offering, and uh, amen. Let it be, amen, unto the Lord as you are, amen, coming in your giving, amen. To God be the glory. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the love of his very wonderful son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost be with you and rest with you henceforth and forevermore and the church of God will sing together. God's time and your offering as you leave. Amen. Sister 
Hazel's back there with an envelope. Just drop it on in there. 